Hi everyone. All right. So in today's video, we're actually going to be discussing the standard edition plus heating. Um, this is not going to be a full video. It's meant to be a supplement to the V4 standard edition video. Uh, what we're basically going to be covering are some of the different options that are available in the heating edition. Um, with the small changes that we have with the heating, we're going to cover this in this video. But for the full build, you'll basically follow the same steps as the standard edition. Uh, with the one exception is that with the, this edition, you do also have some heating pads that sort of need to be plugged in. Okay. So let's first begin with the different type of heating pads that we have available. Okay. So starting in version uh, standard uh, you know, with the version four, we now have our in-between cell heaters and we used to call this the advanced install uh, but now it's about the same or maybe even easier and the main reason for that is we've went ahead and put adhesive on the back so this is a high temp adhesive by 3m very high quality and what this basically allows you to do is you can prepare your cells ahead of time by installing them onto the cell the other option is the sidewall now, there's two ways that you can do it. You can actually prepare your entire bank and attach these to the sides and then slide it into your case. Or you can actually peel the adhesive backing and install it directly onto the case. You'll notice that there are a few small markings on the case for the molding. That actually serves as a guide on where you would line up if you wanted to install this uh, directly onto the case. Now, some people will say, well, clearly the in-between walls is a superior heating. And we're not really going to get into it, uh, which one's better or worse. They both have their advantages. We would say the sidewall heats the battery evenly versus the in-between will maybe is a little more efficient. But the biggest difference really comes to whether or not if you are using the heated jacket. If you're using, I'm sorry, the insulated jacket. If you're using the insulated jacket, they both work almost exactly the same. We've tested them thoroughly, really is no uh, preference. But for this install, we predict most people are gonna be going with the in-between. So this quick sort of build, we're gonna show you how this process is done. By the way, <clears throat> just to let you know, we have the high temp version of the cell, of which is gonna be available in both the 300 and 280K version three and the stud. Now, eventually the stud we may not offer, we may go offer both the EVE official dual pole as well as our stud. There are some issues with the dual pole we'll discuss in a future video, but uh, for the 150 amp BMS that's included in the standard edition or the standard with heating, this is way overkill. This can easily handle 200 amp continuous. You will actually not find any benefit on running this large terminal versus this. This large terminal that we developed was really for our uh, customers that were in the oil field that needed absolute maximum amps to start up really heavy machinery. So that's why that adapter was installed. It's really not needed, but we understand most people are gonna be like, oh, well, obviously I want the bigger terminal. So it'll be available on this as well as the EVE uh, dual pull terminal. And if the demand exists, we may still offer this terminal. So you'll have a choice of three. So now we're gonna go ahead and put these cells in or prepare the heating pad and just kind of show you how that process works. So when the, bat, the cells are in the case, it's gonna be sort of in this orientation. You'll have your final negative here and you'll have your final positive here. And since in this build, we're gonna go the in-between cell heater, we'll have one sort of cell heater in between here and another one in between here. And then we'll have like a cell separator here. We have two options. One is the one millimeter thin separator, or one is the 1.5. Both will work, but it may be a little easier to use one. So for the center one, we'll go ahead and do that. And in this example, we're gonna go ahead and use a 1.5 to show you that the 1.5 does work fine. But we'll also add the one, uh, the two heating uh, pads between here, which are equivalent to about 1.6 to 1.7 millimeter. So that's what we'll do next. All right, to begin the install, we're just going to first lay this down and sort of peel that uh, the adhesive backing off. 
you're going to line the top of your heating pad to the top of the cell. So it's very easy. Clean this off with isopropyl alcohol. It is perfectly okay for the adhesive to be touching the label. It will have no effect at all on the heating performance. You can already see it now. Some people are saying, oh, the fact it will affect it negligibly. Remember, the heating, the adhesive itself has a small membrane. So you're technically not even rubber. And then the actual heating wires, they're heating silicone rubber, which is a very bad insulator for heat. We use it because it's very good at thermal, uh, at, at electro, keeping electroconductivity safe. So don't stress out about the fact that this label and you're attaching something label, it's going to be fine. Okay. Label is peeled, it's stalled, it should stick just fine. And this is going to be the one for the negative. Now we'll take one of the cells and do the same thing for the positive. And then the last one, we'll put that in there and just attach it with some regular tape since we're not actively heating it and kind of show you how the overall layout's gonna be before we put it into the case. All right, so this is kind of how it's gonna be. We've got the heating pad here. We've got the uh, sort of cell spacer attached to the tape right here. This cell basically has nothing. And then the final one has the heating pad also attached to the, the surface. So again, negative, positive, negative, positive. Now the next thing is we're just going to put it into the case in the same orientation and show you how it looks like there. All right, so the preferred method to install it is to first ins insert your outer rightmost cell and then your outer leftmost cell and then slowly then and start uh, inserting uh, the remaining cells in uh, in this orientation. And what you'll want to do is get it to where it's there and then install the final cell. Final cell is going to be a little tricky, but this foam is plenty flexible, so just kind of push it into it, and you should be able to put the last cell in. And once that's done, you should be, you know, um, on to the next step, which is installing the plate. And that's very similar from the standard, so we're just going to skip forward to the last portion of what's different in the hated version. And that's basically going to be the, the top plate and how we attach it to the switch. Just to kind of show you, we got the cells in place. And like I said, it's a little tricky to put the last one, especially on the Eve cells, but you can always reuse the one millimeter, but we, we use the 1.5 because we prefer it to be basically nice and tight, but you can see everything is nice and level and the stick on heating pads really make it easy in, in terms of, you know, keeping things in place, but plenty of room. And we're just going to put our spacers here and basically the, the next part of the build, we're just going to resume where the BMS and everything is plated on. If you want to see how that works, like I said, please reference the uh, standard build video and it'll show you how to uh, set that up. Okay. All right. With the main plate on, you'll see that you'll route the heating pads through the slots that are already in the plates. So just put those in. Now, you'll see that these already have two plugs uh, coming out. So what we're going to do now is plug this into this sort of uh, two into one XG30 adapter. So once that is, you'll have one plug. So it's super easy. You can't really mess it up because it's notched. As you can see, there's a flat bottom and a rounded. So just attach two of those. And once that's done, um, the rest of the build is basically, like I said, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same as the standard edition. All right, just to kind of give you over before we put the BMS balancer plate, we have our lugs mounted final positive here and uh, the combination harness which is the active balancer and the standard balancer sort of all in one we have uh, lock uh, nuts on all torqued properly and we have the active balancer and the main bms coming to the same side and we've got the heating port coming to the left side so split negative to the bms here there and next, we'll just put on the active balancer plate. Make sure to use a voltmeter to check these. Extremely important. Make sure everything is right uh, in terms of how the voltage should be. Final uh, total voltage should be around 12. And then you should have 3.3, 6.6, 9.9 9 on each of your terminals. And along with that case, you know, you should be able to build the rest and it should be fine. All right. All right. Now that we have sort of our uh, basic setup, uh, case setup, with the BMS setup, very similar to the heated kit. Main uh, main difference is that we have the heating plug in here. 
So let's now talk about this because this is the, really the main difference between the standard and the standard plus heating. So the standard plus heating will come with uh, a heat switch already installed on your lid. This is the same heat switch we use in our uh, in our 300 HP and some of the other batteries, and it has five modes: eco mode, medium, high, and then a 12-hour timer mode and a 24-hour timer mode. So, with the difference between the one standard edition heating and then like the V4 Premium, which has a 200 BMS is the standard one will not turn heating on unless you actually tell it to turn on. It still has low temperature disconnect, so it will disconnect charging if the battery temperature gets too low. But in order to turn heating on, you have to actually turn the switch on. So there's no automatic heating turn on function. Now, for some people, that's fine. They actually prefer it. They just want to turn the heating on when they feel like it with too cold. It'll maintain the temperature around 65 degrees or so. And... Uh, that way, uh, when they're done with the season, they can just turn it off and we'll go ahead and turn off. So let's sort of see how the internal structure of this is. So when you get it, um, we went ahead and put some keeps on here to kind of uh, secure it. And this, again, you can uh, set it the way you want to. Main thing, we've got a positive that sort of piggybacks the main positive terminal, a main a negative that piggybacks the main terminal. This is what actually connects to the heating pad. Uh, so that's that where that two in one adapter works and then we've got thermal couple that runs here Now we've used some keeps to put it here And then we also secured it a little bit with some Kapton tape just in the off chance something gets loose But uh, basically we're gonna take our uh, negative attach the negative and then put the terminal on top Take our positive attach the positive and then put the terminal on top and then towards the end we'll plug this in and uh, Yeah, for the most part that's going to sort of you know complete up our uh, heated install and we'll show you how that looks like in, in a minute. All right, so this is sort of how we have it set up. Uh, like I said, very similar to the standard edition, except you piggyback the red terminal and the black terminal on top. Make sure the terminal sits above the main lug. This small thing above that. If you don't put the small lug above that, you're gonna have a poor connection. So it's absolutely critical. The small lugs sit on top of that. We then uh, put a, uh, the extra wire in like a little loop then attached the main heater pour uh, heating pads to this and we're just going to route it underneath so any extra wire gets routed underneath the main bms plate we're going to go ahead and install our thermal probes where we want to so we went ahead and plugged that in and after that we'll just button up and then we'll just test it to make sure everything works and we'll be good to go all right, so we're pretty much wrapped up one more thing uh be sure to install the bluetooth adapter We've installed a Bluetooth adapter and one of the thermal probes sort of in this orientation and another thermal probe here. So one gets the ambient temperature of the case and one kind of gets one for the cell. Uh, again, personal preference, you can install it wherever you want to. We plugged in the uh, main BMS balancing wires and then we turn this on to test to make sure it's working and we are. So we'll button it up, fire up the app and once that's done, uh, install's gonna be done. All right, so we've finished up the build, we've installed it and launched up the app make sure that we can connect via the app and we can we go to our details see how our cells are um sort of see what's going on and let's actually do a test so one of the cool things with the switch is it's got a high mode and when you have high mode you can actually uh basically we'll turn it on put a one two and three it's going to heat it up to about 90 degrees. So you don't normally need to do this, but the cool thing is you can sort of warm up the thing, sort of see what sort of amp draw is. Should be drawing about seven or so amps. Uh, by the way, the in-between cell heaters, we have sort of changed them. They originally were drawing close to nine, and we've changed it to where now the total should be around 100 watts or so. And that was just based on our readings. We found it really didn't make a difference between 100 watts or 130 so. But uh, anyway, you can sort of see how it is and you can sort of see the discharging and that will sort of warm up the battery, you know, if, and it's useful if you just want to discharge your battery a bit. Anyway, that sort of concludes the standard edition with heating. Um, excellent battery, probably the cheapest battery for the capacity and smart BMS and heating that you can buy on the market with legitimate certified cells. Key point, legitimate certified cells. I'm not going to get into the whole thing because I know some people get upset with that, but Hey, here it is. It's right, right around, you know, a thousand dollars or so. So we have plenty in stock. Add them to your cart. Well, I can ship these out pretty much anywhere. 
uh, and, uh, you know, Mexico, Canada, and mainland USA. All right. Thank you very much.